everybody, if you missed the show last week, wait a second. If you missed the show last week, go back and watch it right now. I'll wait. Seriously. That's good. <laughs> Just kidding, but not really. Navigate to Broadus, Montana. Starting route guidance. Okay, we're back in big sky country this week. Oh yeah, and I smoked a giant 6x6 six six elk. What the heart shot of 19 yards from there? <laughs> well, the Montana boys, Austin and Jordan, are going to stay at it while the rut is in full swing. We will be heading out to Powder River Outfitters in Broadus, Montana. We got a couple days and we're looking to steal two whitetail tags. Now, last week we left y'all on a pretty big high, but we didn't tell the full story because right after I shot my bull, me, Austin, and Jordan got right back on another bugling bull elk. They're all in that next little tree. That way. It's like that up over here. It's right there. Right so they're, there. Like, they're like. Hey, look right there. Come on, big bull. Dang, go on. Can you see it? Yeah, he's looking right at us. He's a nice bull. We were exposed in this one little field and we couldn't trick him enough to get him down within bow range. He almost did it, man. How cool was that though, man? He called that elk in, he came down to 110 yards 110, or something. 110, yeah. Dang. And I, was, I was freaking, I had the decoy and I was down there like, oh, maybe I'll eat this, a little bit of grass right here. <laughs> maybe this grass tastes better. <laughs> man, I was just freaking, I was shake a tree like that. It freaking worked for a minute, he was stupid. You know, as daylight faded, we knew that we probably couldn't get on any more of these bulls. So we headed back to my bull, because we still had a heck of a drag to get it to where the four-wheelers could get the wagon in there. The coolest thing about this bull, too, is we killed him on top and he's headed down to the Polaris. Say what you want. I know my brother from another mother, Michael Waddell, got a lot of hate mail one time because he packed the elk out on a four-wheeler. But there's times to do that, and that's a lot of fun. And I've packed meat out for both myself and my friends. Um, but when you got some modern technology, that has four-wheel drive and a, and a trailer, why not use it? Which reminds me, do you think this makes my ram look fat? I might call this spoiled, maybe spoiled rotten. I call it using our head, using technology. Keep the job done. And then I, I spent the rest of the night in the back of that pickup truck quartering him in the parking lot of the Mustang Motel. <laughs> We're on our way now to Eastern Montana, and Travis has got a place over here on the Powder River that's just supposed to be super good and uh this is gonna be a test run because we only got two days but uh we're gonna run up here and see travis and see if we can't get a big old whitetail on the ground if you can we can meet you bro yes sir well we got a little lost but we made it man yeah yeah a good bull huh yeah yeah not too bad we got to powder river outfitters just in time for prime time when the deer were just starting to move. So we grabbed only the gear we needed and uh, shook hands with Travis Anderson real quick and he put us in a good stand. Well, it's the first evening here on the Powder River. We're sitting on an alfalfa field and uh, there's a sandbar out in the river right here. It's got more deer tracks than I've ever seen probably collectively in my life. Our outfitter, Travis, man, he seems really cool. It was the first time I've ever met him face to face. It's early, just got here, just got settled in. Something about being in Montana, man. It, you're like a kid on Christmas morning just because it's a it's a mecca. They're all condensed because these little river bottoms, you know, there's a ton of food and a ton of cover in these river bottoms and there's not any of either past these river bottoms. So all of the deer are compiled in one little area. It makes it nice. But we're gonna smoke something. I've already got permission from Travis to take a old slick head out of the herd if I am so inclined. And I am.
I was feeling it, son. I felt good to be sitting in that blind in Montana, back where I like to be, on a river bottom flat with a good stand of crops out there and a beautiful river running by us. We say this every year, but you cannot beat the beauty and the scenery of Montana and the number of animals that you're gonna see in a given day. It is just, it's breathtaking every time we do it. I can never get enough of river bottom hunting for Montana whitetails. There's a deer right underneath us crossing the river. Come on, right here. never spent so many nights Buck in a couple of years gonna be a shooter. He's just a little too young. Got one buck in the group. He's got some cool stuff going on with his brows, real tall. We got deer back in the river. This is a cool spot. You can hear the deer just splashing through the river, so you can get ready. We just need him. We just need him to walk his 20 or 30 yard trail right here. We'll be in business. couple minutes left. At the end of the night an elk came down, came across these uh, hay fields and you would have thought a daggone velociraptor was after those deer, the way they ran out of that field. I didn't know they'd react like that to an elk. I've never seen a whitetail and an elk next to each other for one thing. But it's like a season worth of deer hunting in Virginia right there. <laughs> I'll try it again tomorrow. Well, that next morning, Travis put us in a stand in a transition area between food and bedding along the riverbank. And I was particularly excited about the look and feel of this place. It was a very deery looking area. And uh, for all you yuppies or people that aren't fortunate enough to have spent a lot of time as a, a woodsman, um, deery is actually a real term. It means a spot that looks, has the look of excessive deer you know, inhabiting it. All right, it's day two with Powder River Outfitters out here in Montana. We're set up on the Powder River. It's a beautiful morning. I mean, it doesn't get any better deer hunting than this right here. My man Travis has got this place rocking, dude. It's, I mean, he leased up the land. It was already rocking in, in eastern Montana right here on the Powder River. There's nothing like this in the world. If you're a bow hunter, you gotta come experience Montana just once, but we're set up on a good trail. I don't know. It, it looks to be at least 11 yards. So if anything does come back across the river to go to bed, then we're gonna be all right. There's big alfalfa fields out here. We're in a little cottonwood uh, transition zone from bedding to food, food to bedding. And all their bedding is on the other side of the river right over here. I'll we'll check in with y'all in a minute. Fix to do some killing. As daylight started cracking, it wasn't long before the parade in paradise was taking place. This beautiful, beautiful 
just sub 130 inch deer walks out, eight pointer. Now this buck is a shooter for sure in my eyes. He is a pretty deer. But I just got done talking to my boy Travis Anderson, owner operator. He informed me that he would like to see us kill a 140. So I like to obey the law of the land, especially when it might get me kicked out of a certain guide service, so I let this deer slide. We're trying to give you guys a good look at what Travis has to offer, but I'm kind of like my Uncle Ted Nugent, and I just like to see stuff get shot and put meat in the freezer, so that was hard to pass that. He's a pretty 120 inch eight pointer. Well, come to find out, we talked to Travis back at the lodge and he's like, oh yeah, man, any eight pointer looks that good. Just go ahead and kill those eight pointers. We're, we're trying to breed for the 10 and 12 point genetic. That's why it's important on every good mission to go over the rules of engagement before you step out into the field. Just a little tip for y'all. Well, we're sitting here almost in the Powder River. <laughs> we're sitting in a little dugout blind. Travis and Levi dug this little circle out. We put this hog wire in here and brushed it in. And all the deer are gonna be hopefully funneling up this little gap right here. There's a big, where a bulldozer made a gap in it or it washed out or something. Same thing as last night. We got the bedding on the other side of the river, deer crossing the river coming up into this alfalfa field. Yeah, it's a pretty killer little spot, man. There's supposed to be a giant in here. An absolute giant. What we would call a 12-pointer. And what they call a 6-point. So, we get that right for both the Montana and the Southern culture. If we only had a fishing pole right now, really it would be nice. Or like some sunscreen and a beach towel. Oh, and I have to say too that in those trees right there, my buddy, Nate Hosey, a couple weeks ago, I think, he killed a Boone and Crockett, his first Boone and Crockett. And he killed it right in those woods right there, and they said there's a bigger one here running with him. I'm not trying to poach your spot, Nate. I booked with a whole different outfitter than you did, so it's not my fault. But we happened to be sitting just feet, mere, mere feet away from where you shot your giant buck. Well, look here, we're sitting in this little makeshift blind, and I get a text from Jordan back in other parts of Montana that said he stuck a giant stock on this bull earlier. We were gonna give it some time. I didn't know if I got a good shot on it or not. Well, the boys spotted this bull bedded down and they were able to slip up above him, use the hill for cover, and get around behind him to get a shot. Well, man, congratulations, Jordan. That is a heck of a bull and a heck of a story. I wish I could have been there with you guys on that hunt. Well, back at the Montana Riverbank in the dugout, it turns out that old big boy never showed up. And we had one more morning to hunt before we had to head to Colorado. Well, as I said last week on the show, I have never left Montana without deer meat in the cooler. And with all these does running around, I wasn't about to let this be the first time. Beep, beep. Thank <laughs> you.
Whisper celebration because there's deer all around. That's a little place we like to call the pump station. It's a suburb of Smoke City. Well, that's the last morning, or on this hunt, as we like to call it, the second morning. We had two days to deer hunt, basically, uh, here in Montana. So, we decided to uh, make even less room in the truck and went ahead and shot a doe. On number eight, we don't really need to follow blood because kind of saw where she fell. Every deer in Montana I've ever killed, even double lung or heart shot or anything, has gone over 100 yards, which is unusual. We came out here on a real quick hunt, and uh, I had a deer B tag, a doe tag, and probably could have shot a couple management bucks, but we were just getting settled in. Now we got to leave and go on an elk hunt. But I know it sounds cliche because you hear backstrap. Everybody uses that term all over. That's really what it's all about, though, you know, provide meat for the family. That doe right there will eat good. I was just happy we were able to get one, man. I was thinking we were going to get skunked on our Montana deer hunt for the first time in history. We've had a ball the last two weeks hunting the absolutely gorgeous state of Montana. I can't say enough about the land and the animals and the people and the great new friends we've made out there. I was super impressed with Powder River Outfitters in the little time I spent there. I only had a couple days to get to know Travis Anderson and the guys. The land is phenomenal. There's a ton of animals. I cannot wait to get back to Powder River Outfitters next year because not only do they do whitetail hunts, they also do pronghorn antelope hunts and some of the best elk hunting in the state is right, right down the road. And they'll guide you on that too, as well as world-class Montana river bottom whitetails. Now, my boy Jordan, we gotta give it up for him. He killed his biggest bull elk on the show this year for his life. That was a great hunt and a great bull that he's probably not gonna be able to top anytime soon. Next week, they're still gonna be elk hunting, only Jordan's gonna be running the camera and Austin's gonna be drawing his bow back, hopefully on another giant bull so we can go three for three. Meanwhile, I am heading to Colorado to do my last elk hunt before I get into full swing tree stand hunting for whitetails in the Midwest and down south. So we are really excited about what we got coming up on Rams Red Arrow, not only next week, but for the rest of the season, only on the Outdoor Channel.